Greetings friends, I will show you how to solve this puzzle from the 2022 Sudoku Grand Prix, it's puzzle 3 from round 7. Click on the link below if you want to try this puzzle yourself, and with that, it's solving time. Okay, so real quick, uh, I can see a 4 and a 4, and a 4 right here, and so means this is the only place for a 4, and block 2. Um, 7 here means this is the only place for a 7, so we can mark that. Uh, let's look at the ones. You see there's a one here in columns one and two in row four. So this has to be one. Again, I solved this puzzle. I competed in the Grand Prix. You see my uh, first two videos on this, rounds one and two. This is round three. I'm kind of solving this again uh, since it's been the first time since I actually competed and trying to remember some of the things I did. I did love the way the initial design of this one worked out and I felt like uh, rounds one and two were easy puzzles but I struggled with the layout to get some rhythm going. Rounds three and four you'll see I did pretty well. And I'll do this one without marks as well. Uh, there's nothing too particularly hard, just some pointing and pairs and some uh, claiming pairs and maybe some naked pairs. Uh, nothing too much harder than that. Alright, so seven, seven, and this seven means this has to be a seven right here. And you'll see there's two spots for seven right there. Keep that in mind. And the two spots for seven right there. All right. The thing you want to look for too is also kind of like what I call like a shelf idea. Okay, so you have these two threes here. This has to be a three. And you see how this one seven, you know, kind of blocks off these squares. Uh, same thing, you know, this seven, one, four. Well, they're all right in here. But you see how like it really creates some restrictions up here in the top part. Okay, um, now I'm looking across row two. Where can a three go? It can't be here and it can't be here, so it has to be right there. And what it leaves you with is a five and an eight. We can't put the five and eight there yet. And for you that haven't competed in it yet, it was kind of interesting for me, is you basically sign up and when you're ready to go, you, you, know, you have a four day period to get started. Once you hit start, your clock is running for an hour and a half. And so from the time you start, you have an hour and a half. And once you have to, you have to actually print out the puzzle. And so it took me a few minutes because my printer's upstairs. Went, print out the puzzle, come down, fill it out with pencil marks, and then you input, you know, two of the rows into the answer sheet. So you input that in, you hit send, and it'll give you a check mark if you've entered it. Uh, you don't know if it's correct or not until after the over, but it's only going to grade those ones that you've input in. So after each puzzle, I was inputting in to make sure I didn't lose anything. And I only got to input five of the 14 puzzles. I was pretty slow about it. Uh, definitely need some improvement there for next time. All right, so five and eight there. What I'm looking at, so nines, two spots for nine there. Okay, so can't really do anything with the nines yet. I'm um, trying to see, is there some more restrictions here? You see how the two comes across? And so the twos are a pointing pair. They have to be in one of these two spots, right? In block four, right? So one of those has to be a two, which means the two can't be here. You have this two coming across uh, row five, this two coming down. So we can solve for two right there. And now you see with this two, we can solve for two right there. And then there's uh, you know two spots for two. We can't solve that just yet. But it does create, and uh, you'll see here too, it's kind of interesting. You know, this two cuts across row two, and this comes up column seven. So these are actually a two as well. I think we did that with the sevens. So what you have here is 7, 7, and 2. You have a 2, 7, uh, basically hidden pair right there. So this is a 2, 7 hidden pair. Nothing else could be here except the 2 and the 7. So where are the other candidates that we don't see here? Uh, 5, 6, and an 8. And strangely enough, we can't do anything about the 5, 6, other than the 6 right there. So we know that's a 5, 8, which means the 6s are now a pointing pair right here. Hopefully that's making sense. Uh, that the sixes are limited to these spots in spot three. I know I'm not doing the marks, but I want to kind of show all that to you. So two, seven, two, seven. And so we know the two also has to be up here as well. So I'll keep that in my working memory as we continue on. Uh, nine come across row six in column nine. So this has to be a nine, which means now we can solve that for a nine, which leaves us with a two and a four right here. So with this two, four here, this restricts the other two candidates to uh, another five and an eight. So you see like the five and eight seem to be, you know, two of the candidates, we just don't have that many of them. You see there's only one five given in the puzzle. 
And what I'm noticing when I'm solving these is if there's not a lot of givens for a particular candidate, like the five or the eight, the tr you know, my challenge and what I'm looking for is opportunities where I can add five or an eight or create a five or an eight. Uh, and that really seems to help out. And something interesting too is this five's coming across here and this five's coming down row two, uh, column two, row seven. So that means the fives will be a pointing pair right here, which means that the fives have to be in one of these three spots in block one. So we'll kind of keep that in mind as well. Uh, so let's look. And now we can actually solve for three. So three and, and these two threes, this has to be a three right there. And so we can solve this for a three. So now we're creating some of those restrictions and we can finish off the last three down there in block nine. Nice. And so now we have you know a full house here. So this is where my next greatest restriction is. And I know I can definitely solve this for nine because it's the only candidate left, and which helps us solve for nine right there. Uh, you know, when we transition, we can solve for nine up here because of these nines in columns five and six, and we should be able to solve for our last nine. So now I'm filling out the nine down here. You see, starting to get a pretty good good flow going uh, as we are working through this grid. The thing I going to look at here is when you see something like this situation, look to see if one of the missing candidates is up here and you see how the six this is right there so i know i can solve that for six right away and so this creates a naked triple right here and so we know what these three cans are going to be based on these six and so i mean we're going to be able to solve this cell and that cell with just that knowledge so what are the three candidates right here for this naked triple it would be a four five and an eight and i can't solve those just yet but i know four five and eights right there means this has to be your two right there. So we solve that for a two, and remember uh, we can solve that for the four. Hopefully uh, you understand how you can use things like, oh, there's these three cells. I know I can solve that cell. Now I know I can solve that cell and kind of move forward with the puzzle. Uh, so now with the four, we can actually solve this for a four, and then we can solve over here for a four. And you know, it just creates, you just keep start creating so much restriction the puzzle that the solve will come quicker. Uh, let's look up here where we have eight, six, and an eight. Can I solve that yet? Nope. Uh, I may not be the best spot, but I feel like with the twos, we've started to create quite a bit of restriction. So now we can solve over here for the two because remember, the, this is a two seven hidden pair. So we know that's a two, and what do we have left here? Five and eight. Again, five and eights are, are, are being kind of tough on us right now. All right, but we got that two in. We're looking at now, you know, in here, this is five, six, eight, and this looks like also five, six, eight across that. And I just can't solve that at the current time. So I'll look down here and I'll notice, hey, the same thing, you know, in this area, is there any cell that cuts across the bottom row. Yep, the seven does. So I know I can solve that for a seven right away. So I see that one pretty quick. Uh, we still can't solve for any of those two sevens just yet. Uh, what is, you know, but and we can't solve for these three cells yet because we haven't made enough marks. All right, uh, we know a four can be in one of those spots. You know, we solved the threes, we solved the nines. Maybe we should look at the, uh, well, I'd say the ones, but the ones aren't doing it. Let's look right here. You know, this can be six or an eight. We can't solve that for six or an eight yet. What can be right here? One, five, six looks like. So one can't be there. Uh, yeah, can't solve that one just yet. Okay, we need to look down here. There's some interesting stuff going on. So let's look. You see how the six cuts across row seven? Uh, and remember that there's a point pair of sixes right there. So let's highlight that. So remember there's a six coming out here, six cut across there. So the sixes are limited to these two spots. Well, the sevens are limited to those two spots as well, remember? So I'm going to just show this as a six, seven point pair or naked, actually a hidden pair, six, seven hidden pair. So what does that mean? That means that this five now cuts across row seven. So five's got to be one of these two spots. So five is one of these two spots, six sevens here. Remember, two sevens there, where can a five be up here? It has to be in this spot now. And so that's how you solve uh, this particular cell and make some progress with the puzzle. And get rid of all those highlights. 
so now that's a little tricky. I remember there being an issue here and having you know getting a little stuck. So I was able to find that. And I was pretty happy about it. So eight five eight, and now we can really start making some more good progress with the puzzle here. All right. So you see one three four five nine. I can't do anything with that particular part. We know that's a two seven, and we know now this is a six eight. And so if this is a six eight, what's in these three spots here? Uh, you're looking for at a one. Uh, six eight. So you've got a one four. We're going to be able to solve this up right here. One four and a five. So this is going to be your five right there. And since that's a five, you remember this is a four five eight. So that's got to be your five. This has got to be your eight, and that's got to be your four. All right. So four four. Only one spot left for a four here in block nine. So we have to solve that. This is still your six seven, which you can't solve. What's across here? One two and an eight. And only one spot left for a one. So that's got to be your one. It's got to be your two and your eight right there. Great. So again, making a lot more progress here, and we added quite a bit of fives. I feel like uh, that's maybe what we can work next. And we also were able to add an eight in here too, which is kind of nice. All right. So where are we going to go for the next spot here? Five. So we know that's a six eight, and then what was right here? Five six eight, and these are uh, that's a six eight. So this is a 6A, this is a 6A, so we're in the 5B. It's got to be right there in row 1. Okay, and so the 5 coming down, this is going to be a 5. Uh, and did we get all the 5s? Almost. Here's your last 5. Great. And so now we can finish the 5, 6, 8 because of that 8 right there. And we can finish this full house 8. We can finish the 1. That's the only thing we're missing. And look across here. What are we missing here? It's a 6. Great, and so now remember this is a 6 and an 8 here, this is a 6 and an 8 here, and so you go back and use that mental uh, memory to kind of go back and finish off those blocks. So what do we got here? We got a, oh, I remember there's a 2 and an 8 right there, there's your, I'm sorry, the 2 and 8's right here, there's your 8, so there's your 8, there's your 2, this is a 6, 7, there's your 6, so there's your 6, and there's your 7, and now the 7, 2, which we had identified very early in the puzzle, we finally get to solve. So we got three left. I always try to look at them in, in a clump, right? So one, six, eight. I see two ones right away. So I know that's got to be my one. Then we'll look up here. See, there's a six already in that column. So that's your eight and that's your six. Check out these other solving videos from my channel regarding uh, the Sudoku Grand Prix. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.